Brand day, everyone. Paul Lawrence Van here again with Leadership is Influence. And today I'll be talking about a topic in which you really want to learn about. And it is if you were called the worst leader that anyone has ever experienced. I'm pretty sure that you do not want this title. And uh, so that's what I'll be sharing today. I uh, just want to give you a little bit of background about me. And, and why not I'll just uh, share with you uh, where you can learn more. Uh, you can learn about my leadership development uh, workshops at www.paulvanspeaks.com. And there you'll see some amazing leadership development programs and workshops that I provide that can help you and your organization to standardize your leadership development program. Remember, leadership is influence. It's really all about developing other leaders within the organization, the staff. So the leader by title, he has the overall, or she has overall authority over how the company and unit and organization works and the workflow, getting the vision completed, the mission, the goals, and more. And then the manager controls the workflow. So he controls the employees, what they do, how they develop the teams, and much, much more. And so the main thing is, is that you want to be in a position where you understand this. And that's what leadership development workshops are all about. And I'm, I'm a true believer in them because I have participated in all that the United States Air Force has for me as a military officer. So let's get to the topic at hand. And the topic at hand is when you see an article that is in real time and it states, he was the worst leader I've ever experienced. You do not want that to be you. And I'll share a little bit more about this story. I won't be calling any names or even talking about the industry that people are in, but the way it all went is that uh, this individual is uh, actually has an investigation taking place because he's leading a lot of personnel and the personnel, they filed charges on him that he created a toxic workplace. Toxic, that's bad. It, even the word itself, toxic, it's bad, but that is bad. <laughs> and you do not want that to happen. And some of the things that were taking a place uh, with the, the leader by title, to the employees is that uh, sometimes the, he would micromanage and not trusting his employees to do the job that they've been trained for. And oftentimes if they made a mistake, which mistakes are normal process and working, because when you there's a, a failure, the failure is not final. It's just you learn from it and you move forward. But to berate an employee in front of everyone in the organization is a absolutely no, no, never do it, never let it happen. And if someone corners you and they attempt to do that, just tell them, hey, time out. We need to take this to the office behind closed doors, or maybe we need to go out for a walk, but don't let it happen to you and don't do it to anyone else. It's just not work. It doesn't work for the long run. And then uh, there was issues with this leader who was considered to be a bad leader is that uh, he was very egotistical. In other words, uh, no matter how much knowledge you have, how much wisdom expertise you had, it just wasn't enough. And, and so he was labeled uh, a person that you didn't really want to involve yourself with, you didn't want to engage with this individual, Basically, the staff avoided him at all costs. And of course, you know, over time, that doesn't work. And uh, it's not a good situation. But just think about it. What if you are in a leadership position and things are not going well and people consider you or me to be the worst leader they've ever experienced in their career? That is an omen. <laughs> We need some retraining. We need some of those leadership development workshops I was talking about. But through it all, and in all seriousness, uh, you want to ensure that you understand what the good qualities of a leader is. And he didn't make it on the 
the trust side of things. He didn't make it on a communication side of things. And uh, one of his peers who, who also happened to be at his level stated that, well, he just runs a tight ship, if you will. You know, he's, he's just really focused and he likes to keep the people in line, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, there's a case to be made for that. But if 10 people in your organization are saying the same thing, the likelihood is, is that he was making a lot of mistakes. And in his particular position and his title as a leadership, he's been removed from that position as of today. And as I stated, he's under investigation and uh, they they will look at it. They meaning the investigative team and the inspector general, if you will, and uh, they will sort these things out. But when you have eyewitnesses who've actually experienced this, the berating of an employee uh, and you're in a leadership role, I can tell you right now, he will not be going back to lead. <laughs> they call it early retirement where I come from. And uh, it's something that you don't want to. But again, look at the workplace. We live in a different dynamic post pandemic. In other words, we live in an environment now where it's very important to have empathy to have compassion and have understanding for everyone. And uh, not only for the employees, but for vendors, for subcontractors, uh, for sales uh, representatives. It's, you know, you, you when you look at it, um, the best thing to do is always kindness because kindness doesn't cost anything. But to be kind to someone and want to be treated the way treat people the way you want to be treated. And apparently since the, the uh, leader by title was in charge, he acted as if no one knew he was in charge. And so he, he was overdoing things and he was full of himself. And he was also up in, in consideration for a next hire promotion. So he was actually in the promotion window as when he really should have just kind of calmed down maybe take a little uh, R&R &R and uh, get himself together. Because when entire staff is against you and the organization, you're not going to win. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to make light of your capacity as a leader. And remember, uh, as a leader, uh, you can be an employee and be a leader because that's what you are. You know, if you, you uh, part of the productivity, if you're part of innovation, you're in, in part of transformation, then you are a leader. And then the manager, the person who manages you is also a leader, but not with the overall title leading the entire organization and rolling out the vision, the mission, the goals, and more. And so it, it very uh, the very best thing that one can do is learn what are the qualities of a good leader? What are the traits? What are the skills of that leader? And I, I call it the whole person concept. And then when we look at the three-legged stool of that leader by title, the manager, uh, then the employee, it's a team that has to work together and you have to find ways to work to make it better for everyone. But when you have a to toxic workplace, it leads to nothing good. And that's not why an organization exists. An organization exists to enhance its business performance. And it doesn't matter what industry we're talking about. It's still about the business performance. And this particular leader who no longer uh, has the, uh, the title in that organization has been sent off to work on another less uh, responsible uh, until less responsible duties until the investigation is over and he's actually sending requests to some of his colleagues to, to gather their support but even with that if you have uh, violated or if you violate the employees it's, it's going to lead to no good and I don't want you to be in that position I've never been in that position before myself. I've seen some things over the over the course of my my career that uh, where I knew it was not a good leader, but over time that individual was replaced. 
because it was having an overall effect on the productivity of the organization and the business performance was not at the level that it should have been with the talent level of top talent that was there. And the number one reason why uh, that leader could not and did not do their job is because they just did not understand what being a leader was about. So they did need leadership training. And even if they received the training, they were not following through with what they had learned. And again, you have to build that trust with your employees. You have to have a clearly defined goals. And you also have to work closely with people because you're dependent on them, the manager and employees from your leadership position uh, to move things forward. And that's why you make the big bucks, as we used to say, and uh, you just have to know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, just tell someone. No, no one has a problem with you saying, hey, I don't know. And then what that means is you have an opportunity to do more research. You have an opportunity to receive more training. You have an opportunity to get better. And you can have some peers who are in the same position that you're in title-wise, and you can talk to them and find out where exactly how does this work out for you? And why do you do that? And it's what I'm doing. Is it the right thing? And I think there's nothing wrong with that because that's part of learning. And it's an ongoing thing. And, and one of the most important things I want you to take from this particular video is that uh, when it comes to leadership, everyone has a leadership journey, whether they are a good leader or they're a leader of influence. Everyone has a journey. There's a starting point where you learn the basics of leadership. And then you have the midpoint where you dive a little bit deeper in terms of understanding it and going to different leadership, attending different leadership schools and seminars and workshops. And then you not only want it for yourself, but you want it for the other people on the staff. Because once you build up a leadership a foundation in terms of everyone understands what leadership is, then you're on your way because it actually can have an impact. For example, if, if the company were being sold, you would get a higher value because you have so many knowledgeable people that have leadership in their background. And because you get a lot of things done a lot quicker, more efficiently, and uh, you enhance it and it gives you a competitive advantage uh, in your industry and uh, that's really a, a bonus for you. And, and so it's very important to understand this. So let's get back to that leader who created the toxic work environment. Uh, there were things such as no one was ever right. They could never do anything right. Uh, they couldn't talk to him. They were afraid to be alone with him uh, when he was talking about a project but most importantly, uh, he didn't have a problem uh, kind of giving a, uh, a lashing, if you will, tongue lashing to individual in front of their peers, which again, that really crosses the line because he would have to want that not happen to him. And, and that's the whole point here is that you don't do something to someone that you don't want done to you. And as a result, uh, again, he's under investigation and then there's another uh, article that I read, and it's a woman who's a, uh, a leader in a leadership position, and she has some um, sexual assault charges against her. And it's one of those things where you're like, okay, so exactly where are you coming from? What are you thinking? And I know this is not something I typically talk about on my videos, but you have to wonder what, what are the people thinking? And so She's under investigation and she's up for another promotion as well. And so uh, we have to look at perhaps some training, retraining is necessary. We may not be able to do anything for the two people that I uh, kind of referencing in the articles that I read, but uh, for people who are in the now going forward, you really want to ensure that you have what it takes and understand in terms of being a good leader. And it's very important to do so because the impact that you're gonna have on those people who work for you. 
and you want to enhance and build upon something good and make it great. And there's an opportunity for that, but there the opportunity will not exist if you have hurdles that you're jumping over that can be controlled. And so uh, I really I want to emphasize that um, uh, getting more knowledge, seeking more knowledge, looking at more resources, getting some really good books to read on leadership that will help with this process, knowing how to build a team and knowing how to treat the team. Uh, for example, with the leader who's on investigation, the gentleman, uh, he uh, had an individual that had a medical appointment that he needed to go to. And uh, individuals called on the carpet about even going out to look after his physical health. Well, everyone is human. No one is a machine. And I would say you have to let him go. Let him go to the medical appointment because he needs it. And we know that coming out of the pandemic, health and wellness is one of the main issues that people are facing today through no fault of their own. And, and so it's never uh, a bad thing for a person to go out and seek some help, especially with the physical health. And if you can't get behind a person who is, is seeking help for something they need, then they probably, the leader probably should not have been there in the first place. But he uh, oversaw a, a very large number of people in the organization. And it looks to me that uh, his leadership style was very authoritarian. And uh, it's something that I had on a previous video about leadership styles. And the leadership style that he had uh, was not a winning leadership style. And uh, as a result, uh, he's paying the price now. It's going to impact uh, him going forward with his retirement. Uh, he may not even receive one, depending on how things work, because it's going to go to court. And as a result, uh, with the legal action taking place, uh, he'd probably be bumped down in his uh, his grade uh, in terms of uh, with the organization that he happens to be with. And so these are just some of the things that I wanted to share. But uh, again, I, as I, I mentioned before in previous videos, that there are so many opportunities to learn good leadership qualities, traits, skills, expertise. There's so many books. There's so many movies. There are actual people that you can connect with on social media that can help, help with this. But going through a leadership development workshop is really the answer. And it's the answer because you uh, dig deep. You look at things such as coaching, how to coach people from a leadership perspective. Uh, you look at how to make a good hire, how to hire people. Uh, you can look at how to motivate people. Uh, you can look at uh, different ways in which you can position your organization for team building. You want it for inclusi inclusivity, diversity, and equity. There are just so many different ways to help improve an organization that will improve their bottom line and definitely maximize the human potential uh, of an organization. And one just has to take time out. But if a person is in a leadership position and they're kind of leading off the, off the cuff, if you will, just kind of trying to figure it out, I'm here to tell you that that doesn't work. <laughs> First of all, because it, it, you would not have the confidence to be able to do it. And you would not have the communication skills to be able to pull it off. And you would not have the knowledge in terms of how to uh, problem solve. Because that's really one of the primary reasons why you work for an organization is to solve problems. And you won't have the ability to uh, work with clients. And the clients may not all be paying clients, especially if you're in federal government. But you want to be able to have a good working relationship with them. And then you want to look at the empathy to have half of people. What would you do if you were in their shoes? So there are a lot of different things. The communication skills is, is, is very important. And then what is the vision? What are you communicating with the vision? And then where are the opportunities uh, when you evaluate a, 
person, let's say, for example, the individual who's under investigation now, and he has to evaluate the people who he has created this toxic uh, workplace. Well, you can't really take his evaluation report because that's already been sabotaged. And someone else will have to, to do that and perform that particular duty because there could be retribution in the process or retaliation, employee retaliation. So uh, there, there's a lot of things to consider, but most importantly, and what I'm sharing with you is that when you get in that leadership position, you get in there and you learn as much as you can and you request to attend leadership development workshops and leadership seminars and, and attend uh, sem sessions with other great leaders and, and study, you have to study them and make it not only an art, but also a science and, and delve into it and learn as much as you can. And in the end, what you're gonna find out is that to be a great leader, you have to be a people person. You have to look at things from the other person's perspective. And that's the employee, because guess what? In the past, you were an employee without the title of a leader and you were a manager without the title of a leader. So if you can't relate to what you have been through and someone else is going through it, then you may very well not uh, be in that leadership position because your memory has to be long. <laughs> and you have to think about, if you had really good leaders and you knew it, then don't you want that for the people that work for you and work with you? The answer has to be yes. And, and so you want to approach it from that particular perspective. And leadership doesn't require perfection, but it does require effort and trying and, and working with people and understanding their positions. So when we put a circle, we draw a circle. So it's like a ring, which means it's continuous. And we approach employees and managers uh, we have to approach them from the whole person concept. First of all, they're an individual. Second, what level of education do they have? Were they previously in the military? Were they in a union job? Uh, were they an entrepreneur? Are they married? Are they single? Or do they uh, have a family? Uh, are there some health issues? Uh, what school did they attend? Have they ever attended a leadership development workshop, and so on and so forth. There's so many different di dimensions and dynamics uh, to the just one employee that uh, when you add up and you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 people, and then it starts to open up that you need to really delegate a lot of the, the workload. And that's where your managers come in and they help you out with this as opposed to getting down to you and the leader with the title and you're getting down to the level with the employee in terms of, of um, disrespecting them uh, in public, in front of their peers. Uh, it's just not the way to go. So we want to have a good memory of where we were at and the, the good leaders that we've had in the past. And, and so right now I'm talking to people who are an employee and without the title of leader, but you're a leader in your own respect because uh, you may very well be the IT expert in your organization, or you very well may be the financial expert or the HR expert, the logistics expert, the sales marketing expert, the engineer. So uh, when we look at these different employee leadership positions, uh, you make the manager and help make the manager better through your efforts, through your expertise, and through the team building that you all have. And then that just rolls up to the leader with the title and carrying out the vision and the mission and the goals that you have set uh, for the organization as a whole. And so again, I just want to share this with you. If uh, you find yourself in a position or know someone you work with and someone says, that's the worst leader I've ever worked for. 
Don't say that you haven't heard about it because I just shared it with you. And you do not want this to, to be a part of, of your, uh, your uh, work history or your leadership journey. And so to learn more about leadership development workshops that I provide through Wealth Building Academy, LLC, just simply go to the link www.paulvanspeaks.com and you'll learn more and it'll also help educate you into, in terms of what my particular mission is all about. And it's really all about taking just one person, helping that person to first understand the true meaning of leadership, and then ultimately taking them on a journey where they can become a leader of influence. And that is one making a difference, not only with your organization, with your staff, but with your team, but for the entire organization as a whole. So thank you so much for uh, listening to today's session. And the title is, that's the worst leader I've ever worked for. My time is up and I thank you for yours. Again, my name is Paul Lawrence Van. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Encourage your colleagues, your family, and your friends to listen in and tune in each and every day because I have different content that I share with you. And I look forward to seeing you on the very next video that's coming up. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. You're the best. And if you're not, you should know that you are. Goodbye.